So here's the truth. These guys are so misunderstood for one reason and one reason only. They're at the bottom of the food chain. But does that mean they're any less intelligent? I don't think so. Keep kiss. Thank you. Hey guys, this is Peppa and this is Wally. My name's Liana, I'm a clicker trainer and rabbit behaviorist, and we are the Bunnies Brigade. We're here to help spread awareness for proper rabbit care and demonstrate how clever these guys really are. So let's talk about understanding rabbits because that's the real root of our channel. We want everyone to understand that rabbits don't belong in cages and hutches. They should be part of your family. Dogs and cats are considered part of the family. So why aren't rabbits? Why are people still so surprised to see a bunny free roaming in someone's house? Well, the answer's obvious. It's because they're prey animals. All the world will be your enemy. Prince with a thousand enemies. And whenever they catch you, they will kill you. That was a quote from the book Watership Down by Richard Adams. And if you have a rabbit or you're thinking of adopting one and you haven't read it yet, I highly, highly recommend doing so. Although it's fiction, it does a remarkably, remarkably good job of showing you life through a rabbit's eyes and really supplements what I'm talking about here. Maybe grab a copy between now and when I release my next video. Now, Prince of a Thousand Enemies, the quote says. You see, you little princess, I'm here. Yes, you are. So we can see just how apprehensive these guys can be about everything and for good reason. Look, I know that we all know intellectually that rabbits are prey animals, but I think we can often forget to acknowledge that when we have them as pets and or struggle to break away from the old fashioned ideas of keeping and caring for them. If we look at the history of domestication, we originally brought animals into our lives because they were of use to us. And they can be more or less separated into two categories. Those that made our lives more efficient, and those that actually produced what we needed. Dogs, cats and horses fall into the first category. Dogs helped us to hunt, herd or retrieve. Cats prevented pests. And horses, despite being herbivores like our bunnies, and in fact naturally prey animals too, well they were big strong and rideable. Animals in this category not only had less to fear from us, but they needed consistent training and plenty of attention in order to perform to the best of their ability. Therefore, both human and animal formed emotional bonds very early on in our history. Rabbits, however, fall into the second category. Just like chickens, pigs, sheep, cows, rabbits were farmed for their meat or fur. And for that, we needed them in great numbers. We certainly couldn't spay or neuter them because we needed a continuous supply. So we had to keep them in cages. And somewhere there was space to put a lot of cages. So not in our houses. I mean, why would you want to anyway? You can't allow yourself to develop any kind of emotional attachment to an animal that you intend to kill and eat. So essentially, my vegan here is a small herbivore, putting him at the very bottom of the food chain, with very little day-to-day -day use to us. But we're talking about animals as pets, because the majority of us don't get animals for their usefulness anymore. So if an animal's usefulness is irrelevant, rabbits are just basically miniature horses. And if it helps, horses are giant bunnies. But we don't put them in cages because they need plenty of space to run. And rabbits deserve that too. As I said, we generally don't consider an animal's usefulness anymore when we come to adopt them. Okay, you might choose a large dog over a small dog because you want some kind of protection for yourself in some way. But for the most part, we have animals for companionship now. And rabbits make just as good of companions as dogs or cats. They are just as intelligent and they're just as affectionate. So let's stop thinking of them as a resource because that's what we're doing when we keep them in cages and don't give them the same attention as we would give a dog. Yes, they're prey. Yes, they are farmed. But that doesn't equate to a lack of intelligence. A 
rabbit can be trained. Any rabbit is capable of learning tricks. Your rabbit is capable of learning tricks. Whether that be high five, ringing a bell, running a whole obstacle course, or even painting a picture. But we can't begin to discover this kind of behavior. All their unique personalities, if they're caged and lonely. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk. Grab a copy of Wardship Down this week. Um, actually, I will leave an Amazon link in the comments below for you. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope it's shaped some perspective and highlighted some points that you maybe haven't considered before, even if you do already have free roam bunnies. Remember to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of part two, where I'll be giving a couple of tips on how to build trust and bond with your bun. Have you finished your mouthful? Because we're kind of recording, I think.